Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Demon Souls. Last time we uh, took out our very first boss, the Phalanx Demon, right here in, uh, well, in a peculiar gate building towards the uh, Palace of Boletaria, which is, yeah. I never really thought about that, but this is a really big building just to house the gate of uh, of Boletaria itself, which is really, really cool. So there's a few things things we can do from now on, but of course if you take a look at the top right of the screen, we have over 5,000 souls at the moment and we don't want to waste those. So we're going to go back towards the Nexus because there's a few people that we can have a little chat with as well, aside from just spending our souls over there. And when we get back to the Nexus, we actually go into another cutscene because the Maiden in Black has some more things to say, I Welcome think. Back. The monumental awaits the above. And when she says above, she really means above, because the Nexus is actually a lot larger than I made it out to be at the very beginning. It's not just that area down there, because we can go all the way up top, and it, it actually goes up even higher than what is shown here, because uh, even at the very top, that rooftop, we can actually access that as well. But we should be able to get some more information from a character called the Monumental that is supposed to be waiting for us at the very top. But before we do that, let's talk to the Maiden in Black because she's responsible to actually level us up. The Monumental awaits the above. The Monumental will explain the Nexus to thee. There we go. So we need to... Can I actually talk to her before that? No, so we really need to talk to the Monumental first. I thought we could actually do that before that, but let's head all the way up. So by the way, the same rules as in the uh, normal game actually apply to the Nexus as well. If I were to die here, my souls would drop at my feet. If I were to drop off another time before actually reclaiming my souls, I completely lose them. So I still need to be kind of careful with my step, because, uh, yeah. The smallest mistake might actually lose that us those uh, 5,000 souls. But small staircase after small staircase and we actually end up... Is it already over here? There's like these separate areas every single time. So as you can see, there are a lot of like small children here. And there's one of them that is actually still alive. And I think he's on this level. Yeah, there we go. Hello. We have long awaited you, slayer of demons. I am one of the Monumentals. We preserve the fabric of reality. There is a tale I wish to tell you. Once, we too, a scourge of demons faced. In the distant past, under benevolent rule, the world was united, owing to the soul arts. Until, a lust for power caused the awakening of the Old One. Across the land seeped a colorless, deep fog, and the world faced extinction at the hands of the demons. Thanks be. We were able to lull the Old One back to its slumber. Yet only after the loss of innumerable souls, and most of the world, lost, erased by the fog. In order to mend the fabric of what land still remained, we entrusted six leaders with six precious archstones. One to the king of a small yet industrious land, one to the king of the burrowers underground. One to the wise queen of the great ivory tower. One to the chieftain of lost and ill-fortuned souls. One to the shaman of the tempest-worshipping shadowman. And the last to the great giants of the northern lands. The archstones were placed in the fringelands that survived. 
We contained the Old One here below the Nexus and prohibited the soul arts. Finally, we became monumentals, half-living sentinels of the fabric of reality. Alas, the other monumentals have perished and only I remain. So by the power of the monumental, the four sealed archstones, because the other four were actually locked before this, have been unlocked. Now it is your turn. You must lull the old one back to its slumber and seal it away for all eternity. If not, a deep fog will absorb all that we know. Have you the strength? To bear this burden. And of course we do. Yes. We are fortunate indeed to have you. Now, go forth and destroy every last demon. The old one, without demons to feed its souls, will a new servant seek and lure you to its bosom. So there we go, a very big, very efficient kind of lore dump. So basically, um, the soul arts are a type of magic that was used to gain more power, but they eventually, uh, well, brought a demon into this world, the old one. And that one created more demons and used those to gather souls to strengthen himself. Uh, eventually, a group called the Monumentals managed to subdue the old one by, uh, well, just putting it back to sleep but uh, not killing it permanently so that was a bit of uh, a difficult thing to do then the monumentals these guys over here were um well just guarding the nexus keeping everything in place because that uh, light underneath the nexus over there is where the old one is actually subdued still but of course he started to awaken again and that's why we are at the moment again in a place where the demons are ruling what was left of the world originally because that was uh, exactly what the archstones were actually for the world was already destroyed partially and the archstones were just created to allow the what was left of the world to be connected to one another which is basically the setup for this entire world so one level below the monumentals, there's a dead knight. If we grab his item, he has a stone of ephemeral eyes. And the stone of ephemeral eyes basically allows you to um, come back to your body form. So your uh, physical form, your corporeal form, from soul form, if you were to die with your body. Because right now we still have our body here. And if we go into the description, it just says that an eye stone on the verge of crumbling has the power to restore one's corporeal form. Once used, it crumbles into nothing. So that's the Stone of Ephemeral Eyes, basically like the humanity or embers from the uh, previous games. Now we also had a Jade Ornament. I never actually talked about this. We picked this up from the corpses that we cut down, from the girl to be specific. A uh, plain Jade Hair Ornament of the kind worn by commoners. The older part of that was of course the Old Spice that we got the aged spice which is uh, interesting because this uh, actually consumes well replenishes your magic points concocted by mixing various fermented ingredients banned in some reason regions throughout history for its pungency and its association with unsavory brewers actually hinting at the existence of witches because the armor that we're actually wearing before the old ragged set actually hints at that as well. Covered in tears, open seams and writing grubs, no person in their right mind would don these garments of their own accord. So basically, that it's hinting at the fact that those two people were a witch and her daughter. But there's more to that, because you can actually do something with that jade hair ornament. If you go all the way up top the tower, because you can go even high, you can actually go to an area called the Pantheon. You can go through this door and this actually houses the names of a bunch of players who have a specific, um, well, records. So the, the, the most phantoms destroyed, the most demons destroyed and so on and so forth. But if we go to the inner ring of the Pantheon, we have a very nice view on the Nexus down below. But I, if I'm recalling this correctly, yeah, there's another corpse over here. And this guy also has a stone of a female eye. So now we have two of those just in case uh, we want our body back 
when we're in soul form. Again, not something that we really need right now, but could come in really handy. So let's go back down. So there's a few items um, on balustrades down below, but I'm not gonna risk trying to get those because those are really finicky to get. But if we go all the way down, we should be able to talk to the Maiden in Black now. And if I'm not mistaken, there also should be a few other characters available to talk. No, I thought there was something right next to this archstone, but it was a combination of some rubble and the uh, the ghost of another player. I thought Ostrava was supposed to be here since we saved him. But apparently he's not here. Which is peculiar. I was... Oh, Wait, you're new. We didn't talk to you before. What do you want, brute? I have no use for Adelpage like yourself. Away with you. So who are you? Um, is that because... What do you want, brute? So he calls me a brute. I have no use for Adelpage like yourself. Away with you. And he looks like he has the mage setup, so I think this might actually be the teacher for mages, but I probably need to be a certain level of intelligence to actually talk with this guy. Okay. As you can see, I definitely don't know enough of this game to actually... Uh, Ooh, wow, there's actually a lot of people here. Um, didn't expect that. Let's talk to this lady here first. Oh my, how has this happened? Has God abandoned us for King Alant, failing to show proper respect? Oh, Mbasa. She sounds religious, so maybe you can teach us some miracles? Back in the time that I lived below Bonitaria Castle, King Alant left on some strange business, then returned with horrible demons in tow. Soon, the lamb was ravaged by soul-starved madmen. My spine shudders just to think about it. If I did not have my miracle stone shard, keepsake of my grandfather, I may not have survived. Okay, so they're, they're again pointing to the fact that King Alant is responsible for all of this. She doesn't seem to have anything else to say, so let's just talk to these other people then, because this is really interesting. Oh, you must be another disciple of God. I too am on a quest to fight the demons in the name of the Lord. May I share God's power with you? Do not be bashful. We are both cut from the same cloth. Aha, so this is the miracle guy. Ooh, learn miracle, disciple of gold. Great, let's talk to him first. A miracle is a heavenly act, but spells are the acts of demons, the work of soul arts. They have similar effects. And yet, one is clearly evil, and the other is clearly good. Magicians, in the end, are mere servants of the demons. So, very strong opinion there, but he actually points out the biggest difference between miracles from Dark Souls and this game. Because I think that there aren't any offensive miracles aside from one, and everything else is defensive, which is interesting to say the least. But all the other spells are then the offensive ones. So magic is more for the offensive player. But that's not the play style that we're going for here. So attuning miracles would allow us to equip certain miracles. And learning miracles is probably where we want to go to. So we can hide ourselves from black phantoms. Making us basically invisible. That is really cool. So evacuate is basically going home. Um, I don't know if that actually keeps your souls... And then antidote is to cure poison. I'll need that eventually, but right now our soul count is a bit too low to spend any souls on this. A miracle. They have some magicians. In the end. I see. You wish to train yourself in stoicism. Very well. Well, no. Pray we meet again. Yeah, we will, disciple of cult. We will definitely meet again. And then we have this guy. I have sinned. Okay. Swore allegiance to Saint Urbain. But was of no use to him, and now I have run away and abandoned his augustness. His augustness. So this guy was with a guy called Saint Urbain, and he sounds like the guy who can teach me more advanced miracles. Oh Lord, punish me, for I have not the strength to punish myself. I wonder if I can just hit him now. <laughs> I'm not going to, but. Let's see, let's talk to the main in black because I want to level up. Brave soul for whom death is no fear. Pretty, lull the old one back to its ancient slumber. 
Okay, so ice stones briefly connect the fused world. Should you lose your physical form, remember the ice stone. The maiden in black manipulates souls with inhuman prowess. Her strength allows her to aid slayers of demons. Because, uh, of course... What is it? Seek us thou the power of souls? Yes, we do. Of course. After all, thou requirest strength. Go ahead. Touch the demon inside me. And that still sounds so dirty. And souls become thine own. And her accent is probably worse than mine, but um, let's seek soul power first. Because we were talking about using the Bastard Sword. For the Bastard Sword we need 18 strength. We have enough to actually put it to 18. And then we have a few extra points to actually put to other uses. So magic we're not really going for right now. But on the other hand, fate is what boosts miracle power. But what we really want to go for is maximum MP. Because uh, right now we can't use our miracle twice. We can only do that once. So let's put one point. What can I do? So one point into intelligence. Maybe two. I do want to put some points into vitality and endurance as well. Trying to focus on the upper half of the stat screen. But right now I think being able to use what does that do to my MP. So that goes up to 57. And I think it's 30 to actually use the... Miracle. So let's put it up to 10 and that allows us to use the healing miracle twice for each MP bar. There we go. And that increases our magic capacity as well, which means that we can now, well, use more spells. So we can now equip a spell as well. Um, sadly, we don't even have, I think, a spells yet. So that is fine. I don't know if that's enough to actually talk to that guy now. Let's talk to her first. Myself. I'm only here to tend to each flame. I keep the candles lit and serve the brave demon slayers who are trapped here. So it already sounds like she's a firekeeper even before the uh, the concept of firekeepers was actually a thing in Souls games. But that's all she has to say apparently. Now, art thou finished? I am. Uh, next up is... Baldwin. So yeah, we heard about that before, but uh, I feel like that Halbert is getting a little bit too close to his face. Um, let's first repair our equipment. So that digs in quite deeply into our souls. Um, and now I actually want to go out of this first. I need to check up on my equipment now. So I wanted to go for the Bastard Sword, but the Bastard Sword is actually 5 weight, so I go over the 100%. What I need to do first is then change our armor again. So we go back to the ragged set. All the way to the ragged set. So that puts us up to 47%. And if we then go to the bastard sword, oh, we're just over 50%. Hmm. I don't have a smaller shield just yet. The heavy shield is 3 weight, which is actually quite a bit. Hmm, 50.7. Right now it doesn't actually seem like we're equipped to the shield for some reason. I don't know why that is, but but at least we now know that we can carry it. It's a pretty big sword, but I feel like it's not as big as the halberd was. So if we... So it does swing quite slowly, but it has about the same stopping power as the halberd. And if we dual wield it, it actually goes a little bit faster. But that drains a lot of stamina, by the way. That is gonna be interesting. I'm not sure if I, because I can only swing this three times before my stamina runs out. I need to be careful because I'm actually running down the durability as well. Um, but it starts at 95. Can we actually upgrade that? So if we uh, want to upgrade the Bastard Swords, oh, I need 550 souls. But we need three Hearthstone Shards and we have just enough. And that puts us to 105. So that's 10 extra attack points right there. Hmm... Sounds like a good deal, but I want to so be able to go over the uh, under under the fifty percent here. Give me a second. But first things first, since we're still here with the characters that stock to stockpile, Thomas. That, that belongs to my daughter. Then she didn't make it after all. My dearest little baby. May she rest in peace. May I ask a favor? Would you mind giving me that hair ornament? 
I'd like to have it in memory of my daughter. This is so heartbreaking. The fact that he even kindly requests this, this just being a part of his, uh, his daughter. I mean, who would refuse that? But it is interesting that we now know that his wife was a witch. I don't know if he knows, knew that, but his wife was a witch and his daughter yeah, might have been a witch in training. We don't know about that, but they were clearly executed right outside of the gates of Boletaria. You're a saint. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mustn't forget. It's not much, but please accept this as thanks. I found it discarded on the main road. It might look ordinary, but it seems to possess a strange power. Anyway, I feel that you should have it. It will be happier in your hands. So this is actually an interesting ring. So we get the Ring of Herculean Strength, which sounds really good. It sounds like what, exactly what we need. But if we check it out, it raises item carry capacity, not equipment burden. So that is sad, but we can check that out. So Stockpile Thomas found his ring lying on the road, raises item carry capacity, which fits his, um, his job, of course. But it basically upgrades this to so the item burden you see over here. We're at 66.7 out of 92. And once we reach that cap, we can't technically carry anything else with us. What we can, of course, do is just um, dump the weapons that we don't use at Stockpile Thomas. And that's exactly what we're going to do right here. So if we go to our weapons... We can actually get rid of definitely the Mail Breaker and the Halberd, although the Halberd is really good to have in a pinch. Um, yeah, let's keep the Halberd for now, since we don't know if we're actually going to use that or not. And the Armor Set I'll keep for now as well. If we need to carry more things, we can definitely still go for the, uh, the uh, Ring of Herculean Strength. But for now, this should be good. Rest assured, your goods are safe and sound with me. Best of luck to you. I love Stockpile Thomas. Just so happy he was with that little gesture. Best of luck to you. So, um, next up is actually we need to have more souls. But we did gather quite a lot of souls on our journey because we still have consumable souls. So we have unknown warrior souls and unknown hero souls. So let's use all of those in one go. And that gives us 1,400 souls. So that was 200 per pop and then the hero souls actually give us 400 souls per pop so that gives us quite a bit of souls again and if we then go back to the main in black we can actually increase endurance and endurance is a stat that actually increases your equip burden so right now you can see that in the middle of the screen we get 42 equip burden if we increase that endurance by one we go to 43 i want to do this twice so we're at 44 uh, makes it a little bit easier to start counting uh, it also, by the way, enhances our stamina and uh, some resistances. So that is perfectly in line with our uh, play style. So let's just do that. And that gives us another two soul levels. Now, we still have a bit of souls left. So we're going to be spending that at Baldwin to upgrade our uh, Bastard Sword. So for the Bastard Sword, we need 550. For the Halberd, that's, it's actually only 380, but we also need Hearthstone Shards. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go for the Bastard Sword. It is a bit more... You know what, I wanna just e quickly experiment with its moveset. Okay, so it does have an overhead slash, which is what I was looking for. But I don't know... There is no... Stabbing move in the Bastard Sword, which is... Hmm... Something that is annoying, because of course there are enemies that are weak to puncture damage instead of slashing damage. And it looks like this sword only does slashing damage. Interesting. Should probably keep an eye on that, but it doesn't hurt to actually just upgrade this once. So there we go, the Bastard Sword up to plus one. You don't have the required materials. Oh, I only have three Hearthstone shards and I need four. Kind of read that wrong, I thought I had four and we need a three. Uh, do we go for the Halberd then anyway? Because the Halberd I can upgrade with just three, right? Yeah. It is still a very good weapon. Yeah, let's do it like that for now and then equip the Halberd again. 
That is, it's it's sad that I wanted to go with the bastard sword, but we'll do that later on. I'll definitely be able to be able to uh, do that. So now we're still at 45. We might actually be able to upgrade one of our armor pieces. Okay, I don't have a good combination just yet, so we'll have to make do with what we have. Uh, that's fine for now. Um, sad that we can't use the bastard sword just yet, and we still have 600 souls left. Where should I spend those? Maybe Baldwin has something that I can use. No, okay, I'm gonna keep the, the 500 souls and we'll head straight back to Boletaria. Yeah, that's gonna be the first area that we're gonna do next. Because the next section is actually, actually one big bridge section, which is actually more interesting than it sounds. So back to the Lord's Spot, which is the next section. And I totally forgot something. Give me a second. Luckily, loading times aren't really a problem in uh, Demon's Souls. So uh, there's one thing I needed to do. And for that, I need to explain a bit about something that's called World Tendency. Um, world Tendency is something you can actually look at in the menu here. And you can see that on the eyes everywhere. There's world tendency and character um, tendency, and that goes from pure white to pure black. When you die in your physical form, you actually go down a level, so towards black, um, on the world that you are at, and your character will do the same. But if you kill a demon, um, you actually go up in tendency, so you go towards white, pure, uh, well, pure white tendency. I think there are three levels in both directions. And if you go to plus three, you get to pure white tendency. And if you go to minus three, you're in pure black. And that has an effect on some of the uh, events in the world. Now, the nexus is separated from all that. So what you want to do, if you want to try to go first to pure white in every level, you actually want to just kill yourself in the nexus. Because like that, you don't actually you lose world tendency. Uh, we do go back to soul form because of this, but that's of course intentional, so we have the white glow again. And the only thing that we now really want to do is get those 600 souls back. And now you can also see the effect of the cling ring. We have 75% of our health instead of the normal 50% in soul form. So it's really weird to kill yourself like that, but it's, uh, yeah, it's advised by most uh, of the, uh, well, better players than me. Just because it's easier to then get to pure white tendency. Because there aren't that many bosses. So what you usually want to try and do is get to uh, white world tendency as quickly as possible on your first attempts. And let's get rid of our first hoplites. Because it's not because the phalanx demon is dead that these guys are dead as well. Okay. So and there's a few in this area. I just wanted to clear them out. Uh, well, and I shouldn't probably turn my back to them. And these guys actually have a chance to drop um, upgrade materials, which is nice. And I hear another one. There it is. Um, so it's always good to kill them. Just because you could get some uh, nice materials out of that. We don't seem to be having any luck. None of these have actually dropped uh, shards, so that is too bad. But we can get some throwing knives over here. Then on the left here, there's... Ooh! Is that a Strava? Aha! Uh -huh. Yonder! Over here! It's me, a Strava! Look at me! Again, fenced in by enemies. Could you assist me one last time? Of course we will. Clear out the soldiers blocking this passage, if it please you. The Lord's Path, just over there, is now a feeding ground for dragons. Have your wits about you. So because we saved Ostrava the first time, we actually get a little chat with him here. And he warns us of the dragons that are, of course, still alive. Can we actually talk to him again? Doesn't seem like it. So we need to find a way around to actually that other side of the gate and clear out the enemies behind him, which is uh, not going to be an easy task. Now, up here, there's another item, and that is some more Half Moon Cross, always handy. And then, if I'm not mistaken, that clears out this first stable area. But uh, then we're back outside. We're past the entire large gate. And as you can see, this, uh, this bridge is what we're here for. So we need to get into the secondary wall over there. Uh, as you can see, the palace in the background. But, as you can see from the charred forces... Yeah, our friend the Red Dragon is back. And he's not so pleased. And this time, he has zero chill. 
Because this is basically what this level is going to be. So it's going to be us chasing that dragon, trying to get across the bridge before he loops around and just blast the entire bridge again. So you should have enough stamina. We also pull a little bit of extra stamina because of our upgrades uh, to get across the entire bridge and get some more healing items over here. And that's just what this thing is going to do the entire time. It's going to try and barbecue us. Because that's what dragons do. Just going to clear things around a little bit. And if you think, for, okay, I can do the next bit. He's just barbecuing the other bit. No. If you go, if you go over here, the dragon will actually change its route to actually start barbecuing this bit. So if I, I think he's now, yeah. There we go. So now he barbecues that bridge, but of course he also kills all the enemies on the bridge for us, which is always a very hefty 100 uh, souls there. So that is good. Now, there are these little, um, um, well, middle towers in between the bridge and there are enemies here. There we go. Now we can kill the spear guy. And then, yeah, there's an axe guy over here as well. I should probably use my shield for this guy. Oh, now we hit the, uh, the wall on the side, but there we go. Dodge, and there's an archer over here, because of course there is. If I double wield, yeah, this definitely kills these guys now. In one go. Get another good loop at the dragon, because he can't really touch us here. Well, he, he technically could. I mean, he's a dragon, he could definitely barbecue us up here, but he will never do that, so he always goes over the bridge. It's kind of like uh, a video game mechanic, because obviously, normally, the uh, dragon would actually be able to kill us. And then we get the wooden catalyst, which is our first magic wand. Oop, that guy actually dropped some more items as well, and that's another soul. But oh, that's not... yeah, that was just a corpse. It seems like he's actually dressed like the Disciple of Gold, which is interesting. But if we go back inside just for safety, we can actually check out that catalyst. A wooden catalyst and the most rudimentary tool for casting magic and it requires a spell that is learned, must be committed to memory and a catalyst must be equipped. And of course you need to have MP for it. Just a basic explanation of magic, we won't be using any of that just yet. Let's get back into the shield because the next section of the bridge is actually too long to run on our own. And it's also capped off with a few uh, arches over there. I think there's four of them, if I recall this correctly, because it's been a really, really long time since I played this, uh, this game. Uh, but if we go down here, we can actually go underneath. And this is the tunnel that uh, Ostrava is stuck in as well. So really dark, which kind of makes sense. And I think if we, we want to go back... So Ostrava has a fighting chance, and I wonder if we save him, if he actually helps us out. Because I'm actually not certain about that, but there are enemies in here. Yeah, there we go. There's one hiding. Hiding behind the wall. The sneaky bastard. We get some more healing items from that. Aha, and I heard the string of a bow. I need to be careful that I don't get ambushed from the sides, but... And there's the... Oh, yeah, there's multiple archers here. Oh, there's definitely multiple archers here. There's about four of them. So I'm gonna need to be... There we go. And now we can double wield. There we go. Just chopping them down. Oh, oh, there's another one. We're not done yet. I'm gonna keep my shield up. Anybody to the sides here? Doesn't seem like it. There's at least two more. There we go. And there we go. Okay. Seems quiet for now, but I'm going to be careful. They actually murdered this poor man as well. And he has the Gash Resistance Ring. Let's check that out. It's probably protecting against bleeding. Yeah, increases resistance to bleeding. But it actually has some lore as well. Bearing a bright red seal. Crafted by Gary, known for his magical handicrafts. And close acquaintance with Sage Freak, the visionary. The seal depicts a gash. Gary. Okay, so that's... Um, poor Gary actually made a blood resistance ring. This crossbow is stuck in the wall. I kind of thought it was a trap, but... There we go, some more crescent moon grass. Always handy to heal up. And then we have Ostrava. I'm assuming he didn't leave anybody alive here. Yeah, okay. Hi, Ostrava. Thank you. That's twice now. Time to forge ahead. 
This is a token of my gratitude. Please accept it. Okay, I will. Probably don't have a, an option here. There we go. We got Dark Moon Grass. That is actually interesting. Can we talk to him again? Not a single person left. Why on earth? How did this happen? Noble father. And there we go. The first indication that Ostrava is actually looking for his father. How did... Um, that's not what I wanted to... There we go. And we get the Blue-Eyed Knight... Quirrus, so basically the body armor of the blue eyed knight, which is not as good as the Murden scale armor that we had before, but it's also not as heavy, so we might be able to make some use out of that, because the armor is a little bit better than the ragged set, but of course it still weighs um, like seven points of uh, weight more. So, hmm, can I make this work? Well, if I get rid of the helmet... I might be able to make this work, but then I'd lose the helmet, which is 14 armor points. Yeah, if I lose the helmet, I have just enough. But I feel like with 14 armor, that is actually better than the difference to... Yeah, the old ragged ropes is only 6 armor less, which is uh, definitely still better. But it, it's starting to give us a few options towards uh, doing a bit of fashion souls. Um, and we also need to... need to. Where, where's Ostrava? Is, has he gone on without me already? Ostrava? I probably shouldn't be running here. But I was hoping that he could... Ah, there he is. That he could help us out. Where is he going? He's going up. Um, Ostrava, buddy? I should probably not follow him. Where is he? Because he's going to get toasted by the dragon, isn't he? Ostrava? Ostra Ostrava, please. Ostrava, please. Don't. Don't go outside. Oh. Uh, Okay. He's going up. I mean, this is the interesting part. I don't think NPCs ran around in Demon Souls before. He's unfazed by the dragon. I kind of blinked with my eyes a little bit. Oh, he's just gonna... <laughs> okay, he's just gonna go back. Okay, that's fine for me. I'll go, uh, I'll go into the tunnel and continue onwards there. So, back in the tunnel, going the opposite direction from the one that we just saved the Strava from. And there's still more barricades. Let's just get rid of that. Because I don't want to have it in my way. And I think there's another one. Yeah, I heard it. In my way here. But still, normal drags, not that much of a problem. And we have another item over... Oh, there we go. Another item over here. But this guy tried to kill us over it. And we get an unknown hero soul. So again, 400 souls on top of everything else. And I hear... I hear growling. That's probably no good. I should probably go slow here. And uh, we got... A wolf. That made a horrible sound. I don't like killing dog enemies. Ah, uh, there's another one. There's definitely another one. There we go. Are there? Because I still hear growling. There are more. I definitely don't remember there being wolves. But we have the range to actually deal with wolves, which is good. I can I can still hear growling. Very faint, but yeah, there we go. Oh, there's actually two. There's another one. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. Got a slight knock there, but should be A-OK. Okay. okay. Didn't hear any growling anymore, so... Five wolves, that's actually pretty harsh. Anything else? Anything else? Oh, yeah, definitely something else. Let's grab this, some more moon grass. There we go. Ah, you made a big mistake, buddy. You need to hit me if I'm that close. And then... Is that... Aha! That's the, the thief, the thief dragling. Oh, we meet again. Fancy that. Hope you find something that suits you. So now we can actually get rid of some excess souls. And I think this time that might be a bit more interesting because that helmet is 3.8. I'm going to have to compare that. So this helmet is only one armor point stronger and is 5.4. So that's a 1.6 weight difference. And that could make all the difference in the world, actually. So let's buy the plate helm, which is 1,000 souls. There we go. 
And then we can actually spend the rest of our souls because I don't want to be lugging too many of them along. Um, I'm going to just buy a half moon grass and then a crescent moon grass just to get rid of most of my souls. Because I know the part that's coming up next. Um, can I can actually talk to them because I know NPCs oh, tend to have more... What'll it be then? More dialogue if you spend some souls on them. The no, okay, that, that's still the same. Okay, never mind, let's leave. I spend souls at your shop, buddy, be happy. So, before I forget, let's put that plate helmet on. Yes, it's worse, but it does put our equip burden down. And can we now go... Ooh, that's not an option still. But we might be able to... No, doesn't seem like we can. It still doesn't give us the option. It is worse and I... Yeah, but it's still another option that we have. We're going to have to play with that a little bit. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, just keep it at that. Just as much armor as we possibly can have. Then we can go up to the sides and we should be at the next watchtower on the bridge. So same thing here. We can go um, one level higher and I think there are still enemies here. Although it looks pretty quiet. No, there's definitely a guy here. And this guy actually hit me? It seems like he can. Oh, but I can't. Ow. Ow. Um, I could hit him as well. It does seem to only be these guys, so... There we go. Chop him down like blocks of wood. Ooh. Item will exceed carry capacity, but we can send it to storage immediately. It seems to be pretty heavy. 2.2. Um, and let's send it to storage. I think that's the option button, right? <laughs> ah, we got the first bow and heavy arrows. Okay, we don't need those just yet. Um, but it's one way to actually permanently kill the dragon if you have enough um, arrows to actually spend on the dragon and have the timing down to hit it every time it passes. Let's just heal up because the next section is a bit of a bitch. Oh, we still need to deal with the archers first. And then that one on the right hasn't fired yet. There we go. And then that guy. Okay. Ooh, and we got all three of them in one go. Long live the Halberd. That was that was fancy. Now we have a, a full gate. That's the part I don't really look forward to. So let's grab the items over here now that we can. Seems to be just a few. Oh god, I think he's coming. Ooh, that was just... I think that singed my ass a little bit. The ragged ropes might be a bit more ragged now. <laughs> okay, now, on to the part that I really don't like. Um, this bit. Because this is a long bit that actually stretches all the way up to... There we go. All the way up to the gate. So let's let the dragon at least kill them once. But there's a bunch of enemies at the very end that I can't... I mean, I won't have a lot of space because the dragon is blasting fire up my ass. Okay. So, next time that he passes, we need to get over there. I'm gonna set my half moon grasses because <laughs> I'm gonna need the healing. Um, and other than that, yeah, let's hope that things work out because this is gonna be all or nothing. There we go. Let's start running. Let's start running. And I think halfway there should just slow down on the... Uh, stamina usage and then I think they all fired and then this guy is here I'm gonna try and kill him as quickly as possible because there's actually another one okay there he is that was fine that was actually fine I'm oh you are still here oh yeah there's archers on top of the castle as well but I think I'm Close enough to the gate, so let's send that over there. Some more half moon grass. So I definitely can't use anything anymore. Let's grab this as well. And that's. Oh, ah, crap. The archers could hit me again. <laughs> that was nasty. Let's just grab a little bit of half moon. No, just crescent moon grass. And then this guy. I'm gonna let him come all the way over here. Um, let's put up my shields. I don't wanna risk anything at this point. And, oh, don't get the backstabs as easily, easily. There we go. And now we got the backstab. Okay, just use the shields. 
slowly moved around. And right now we're actually up to our next boss battle. Because I don't think there are any more enemies over here. This is a hallway that, yeah, a lot of people tend to run through, but we kind of have extra... Ooh. Ooh, there's a door here. Extra space now. We can actually go up. I could get rid of those archers then, I suppose. This is gonna... If I die here, I'm gonna be so mad. Oh, there's a... Damn it. Oh, no, wait, I got it. That's a crystal lizard. So that gives us two large hearthstone shards. So that's really good. This, does this do anything? Wait. Oh, but that's to close off the gate. Why didn't they just do that if they wanna, didn't want to come? Let me come here. That is weird. Because they could definitely close down the gate and just lock me out of the castle. But apparently they really want me to come in. Peculiar. So this is the... The gates. I think that one archer already saw me. And there we go. Let's just chop these guys down as well. And there's an item over here on the corpse. Another stone of ephemeral eyes. I don't know if that was... That seemed to be on the archer. And then this is a renowned warrior soul. And those don't actually weigh anything. So we can just grab that. And then there's more items over here. More souls. And then over here, that does have weight, Noble's Lotus, but we can't really read the description because that has been sent to storage as well. So with that done, I don't think, there, is there any way I can maybe make it easier on myself and kill the archers permanently? I don't think there's an option for that here, sadly. I did get my revenge on that arrow I got uh, shot with, but let's go down. So the next boss battle is technically not that hard but it's a very big enemy and he has some backup and it's the backup that i'm gonna need to clear out first so here goes nothing might have actually been better to go with the full armor set but here we go the tower knight this is uh yeah a boss that most people probably know a humongous knight with a humongous shield and a humongous spear. But the real problem here is the amount of archers here. I rolled. But for some reason I didn't really get... Okay, I think I rolled out of the way of that one. So we need to go up these stairs. So we can kill the uh, archers here. I want to be careful. Because... Yeah, the uh, Tower Knight actually has ranged magic as well. But as long as we're inside, that shouldn't be that much of a problem. Okay, we have a little bit of a breeding. So I'm gonna just heal up with some grass. And I'm just gonna keep the shield up. With all the arrows flying around, I don't think that's that much of a problem. Although I really need to kill these guys in one go. Because if they fall off, that's gonna be more of a problem. So let's just kill them over here. And then there's another one. There we go. So that's three. I don't know if I can actually go over here. So yeah, there's a lot of blue magic flying all over the place. It's really cha chaotic. But, um... Ooh. Damn, Tower Knights. Take it easy. Let's just send that. I really didn't need to grab it. <laughs> but we can easily access the other side from here. Just gonna wait a little bit, because... If I get hit by one of those soul spears, I don't have a lot of magic defense right now, I think. Woo! That was... I felt that in my sphincter. I spat. Oh, damn, that was close. There we go. That's almost all of the arches. I think there's another one on the staircase on the left here. So I'm going to have to be... Yeah, keeping an eye out for him. There we go. Oh, but... It, yeah, blue magic. I think there's that fat guy in the back that's also here. Or is he not here anymore? Aha, uh -huh. he's not here. I do love the music in this fight, by the way. I'm just gonna run around a little bit. Yep, go back to the half moon grass and dodge his attacks. Okay, I don't think blocking will help us that much. There we go. And start whacking away at his 
feet, because that's the weak spot. And we just need to back away when he moves the shield up. And as you can see, he seems to be robotic. So there's sword power coming from his ankles. There we go. And if you weaken the one that's starting to get damaged, be consistent with what you hit. And we should be able to damage him enough to make him drop down. Oh, and that was a, a slight hit. Actually, not that bad. I'm going to heal up just a little bit. Just to make sure that we don't lose it. There we go. Underneath his ass. And I'm trying not to lock on too much here. There we go. Another big hit. Maybe do I need to hit both feet? That could actually be the be the case. I need to recover. There we go. Okay, don't know why I did that again, but if I hit this foot again. Ooh, I was right underneath that one. Let's just heal up again, cuz. Ooh. Damn! Hold our rolls at the exact right time there, but I need to be a bit further. Okay. There we go. It seems like both of them are equally damaged now, but it doesn't seem to work all that well. This is completely open. Oh, I think he's going. Yeah, there he's going. Okay, so now I should probably go for the head, right? I don't know about this. Ah, yeah, there we go. So, just get my stamina back. Got another few hits in. Ah, and I got hit a little bit. But it seems like he is quite a bit damaged now. And he goes with another big swing. And the reason why I'm also not locking on is because this is a very big enemy. I want to keep him in my, in my sights most of the time. I think he's falling down again. Yeah, I got hit with the spider shield. That was actually cool. There we go. And that's the end of the Tower Knight. I'm just going to heal up again. I don't trust it. <laughs> Woo! And there we go. The Tower Knight's trophy. Demon Vanquished. You shall obtain a demon soul. And we saw... Did we actually see the death of the Tower Knight? Because you can actually see the silhouette of most of these guys every time you kill them in the, like, the blue swirl. But there we go, our second boss done. And I think we still have a little bit of time to go into the Nexus now. Because right now we almost have 10,000 souls. We also picked up a few uh, consumable souls. And yeah, that's exactly the kind of thing that I was looking for. And we get the Iron Demon Soul. And again, this doesn't actually tell us anything about the Iron Demon. Which is weird. I feel like it should. I feel like it really should tell us something about that. Uh, we also got the telescope last time but possibly originated in the relatively advanced region to Boletaria's south. So that's something we got from Ostrava, but nothing too interesting to say about that. It also makes me realize that I completely forgot about the healing miracle. Not that you can really use it in a fight, because it takes a really long time to actually be cast, but uh, that was the Tower Knight, which is, uh, yeah, not one of the hardest bosses, definitely, but uh, still can be very imposing if you... Uh, don't know what to do, but let's go back to the Nexus. And as you can see, the uh, the maiden in black actually changes her position quite a bit. Aha! And there's Ostrava. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little chat with him. He's on this beam. He's gonna drop off and break his legs in that heavy armor. But uh, hello, buddy. Blight. Boletaria was a grand kingdom. The king, his knights, and his subjects were modest and plain, but also steadfast and compassionate. I have spent much time in my studies in the cultured countries of the South, yet no country holds my heart as does Boletaria. But look at what has become of us now. I refuse to believe that this is what Father wished for our great land. Okay, so we got a little bit more of a background to the, uh, well, the Boletaria of before the demon's arrival. Here in Boletaria, we speak of the legend of the two swords and the solitary hero. The two swords are Demon Brand and Soul Brand. One sword banishes that which befouls man, and the other banishes man himself. The solitary hero is old King Doran. King Doran is the everlasting one, 
founder of Boletaria, and protector of the Two Swords. <laughs> of course, only according to legend. But in the dark state of our land, sometimes legends are all we have. And you know, also remember that this is a video game, and if they mention a legend, chances are that you can actually meet that legend, and this game, I think, is not any different. Old King Doran is someone we could find later on in the game. King Alant led Boletaria with a round table of the bravest knights. The noble twin fangs, Valifax and Bjorn. Alfred, the tower knight, Metas, the penetrator, and the brave tribesman, Longbow Ulan and his fearsome legions. But today, Boletaria is an abysmal mess. Valifax was lost, and Bjor slipped through the fissure, never to be heard from again. All the rest, along with Boletaria, are either devoured by the fog or fallen afoul of the demons. The Boletarian knights are no longer, but perhaps our age will see the rise of new heroes such as yourself. So this is one of those uh, lore tidbits that you can try to decipher a little bit. So he talked about a few knights. So Alfred is the tower knight, the one we just basically killed, the demon form we just basically killed. Longbow Ulan was the archer and his legion, so I was kind of wrong, I thought um, it was a her, but Ulan was the archer that turned into the phalanx demon, which is why, of course, he was surrounded by his legion. Um, and then the last, the twins that he was talking about, Valerfax and Bjor. Bjor is actually still in Boletaria. Valerfax seems to be lost to the people in Boletaria, but we know from the introductory cutscene that Valerfax actually escaped Boletaria and told the people outside of the world of what happened to Boletaria itself. So, uh, the only one that we haven't met yet is the Penetrator. And that's because, yeah, we'll be meeting him uh, sooner rather than later. But it's going into the harder parts of Boletaria, of this arch, well, not this archstone, that archstone. And we will not be continuing through that archstone just yet. So, next time we're going to go into uh, the second one over there, Stonefang Tunnel. Uh, but we were going to spend those souls on a few nice things. So I think the first thing that we need to do is bump up Vitality just a little bit. That gives us around a 22 HP uh, bump. We could do that again, but I feel like, yeah, I'm gonna go with Endurance to 16 first. Strength to 20, um, and then we have a few options. I mean, I do like round numbers. If I could put Fate to 14, but Fate is not something that we're using just yet too much. It's really limited in what we can do with it. Um, so maybe, do we put intelligence up? No, I'm gonna just put vitality up once and then endurance up once as well. So HP up and stamina up along with our equip burden, which will now be up to 46, which is a, a nice number as well, even though both endurance and vitality are now an uneven number, which is a bit weird. Now, does that change the uh, loadout that we can actually equip? So if we go for the plate helm, which is lighter, and then go for the Blue Eye Night Quiz. We still can't go. We need to actually go above 50 to make this work. Which is sad, because I really want to start wearing some armor. I can't upgrade the Greaves, but maybe I can upgrade... Oh, I can't even upgrade the, the Gauntlets. Yeah, we need to go up to 49 to actually equip the Gauntlets. The Gauntlets are pretty heavy as well. Um, so yeah, this helmet is still not something that we want to be using. I did get a new shield, a draggling shield, like this wooden board, which is of course a lot uh, lighter than the header shield, but... Or the heater shield, I don't know how to actually pronounce that. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have to make do with our armor as it is right now. Uh, we could get rid of the helmet and then try with the blue eye knight quirus, but even that doesn't allow us to, yeah, equip anything else. So it's still the exact same problem. So let's just stick to it like that. But I also forgot to actually spend my, um, well, my stored souls. And if I go to the maiden back again, I can actually pull out one extra level out of that. Could put endurance up to 18, which is, I think, the best option right now, just to keep pushing that equip burden higher. And just, yeah, just working with that um, Temple Guard archetype. 
We're starting to go into 2600 souls now for the next level, so it is going up rather quickly. But with those remaining 1500, I think I can buy something. Now, is my intelligence actually high enough for you now? Brute. I have no use for adult page like yourself. Away with you. Okay, so my magic stat is probably the one that needs to go up then, because this guy still doesn't want to talk to me, and I think I'm up to... Yeah, 10 intelligence, which seems to be enough, at least for me. So that means that we're going to be spending our final souls on a battle axe. Um, I still think that doesn't do puncturing right now, but the short sword actually does. But let's, uh, let's also grab the battle axe just because I can, or I can start investing in a bunch of arrows. Now, let's grab the battle axe for now. It's at least something... I don't think we can actually sell items. The battle axe actually weighs one less than the halberd and also does 80 damage, which is not nothing. Um, but other than that, yeah, it seems to be pretty similar. The moveset will probably be different. So that's slash slash, and it just goes all the way around. But doesn't actually use that much stamina, which is interesting if I want to start using a, a more lightweight weapon. Um, then with dual handling, you actually kind of get more the overhead slashes. And then the heavy attacks are like sweeping the lower leg. And then the heavy attacks when single-handed are overhead slashes, which kind of makes sense. Okay. Actually seems like not a bad weapon. Huh. And with the battle axe equipped, I can actually go for the plate helmet and then either the greaves or the gauntlets. So either the Murden Grease, but I think the boots actually look pretty good. So let's just get with the gauntlets. And that gives us a little bit of a different look. And we're right underneath that 50% now. So, hmm. Let's try this just for a little bit. I did dump some stuff at Stockpile Thomas as well. So we should be good to go for the next time. Because I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And when we get back, we're going to go straight into the second Archstone, Stone Fang Tail. Which is probably going to be a bit of a longer episode. Because Stone Fang Tail, if I recall correctly, is huge. But that's for next time, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode of Demon Souls. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Stay nutty.